What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of our playing with robotic arms series where we're going to at least be starting with attempting to play air hockey. So uh, there's a few questions that come into play right out of the gate which is you know how are we going to pass data basically to the arm in order to actually understand like what's going on. So there is an onboard camera that you could have on the arm itself and then there's also like having an overhead camera. Now, from a lot of thought and contemplation, I, I like the idea of an onboard camera, but uh, I think at least, you know, so, sometimes you want to make things as simple as possible. And I think that an overhead camera is likely the simplest thing to at least start with. And then maybe later we could try to use an overhead camera, or an uh, onboard camera rather. So, going with the overhead camera idea, the uh, the thought that I had was to basically, let me pull up here. So you can actually see it in the background um, of the video, but basically I've got the air hockey table on the floor and then I've got a camera pointed down on a piece of wood basically. Uh, and that's, that's how I've got it pointed at the table, but let me pull up an image. So basically, this is what the, the camera sees. So obviously, we've got some stuff around the edges, but this is the, the playing space. So this is our robot arm, and then this is the puck. And I think basically what we want to do is stop saying basically every five seconds, but we'd like to also, um, we want to know where the edges of the, the playing board are. Possibly if there is another player, you'd want to be able to identify where is their uh, striker. Um, otherwise, you really just want to know where the puck is in relation to yourself. Um, and that, that's about it. So that's the, the first task is really just an image analysis type of task, and that is find the puck. Now, there's lots of ways that we could find the puck. Uh, you could go down the object detection route. You could go down... Um, and there's a bunch of different, you could use the TensorFlow Object Detection API, or you could use more crude forms of object detection. The other option you have is like circle detection. Uh, you can do that within OpenCV. The other one we have is, is we could go based on color. So this is a nice deep red. Nothing else really matches this red except for the red over here. So we could filter out and find the puck based on color. And that's the method I'm going to go with right now. Uh, but if someone else has an idea for a method that might be quicker uh, as far as processing is concerned, so everything is about how quickly can we actually process this, because uh, this would be a live game, and the quicker that we can process the real camera data, uh, the better we're going to be actually playing the game. So anyways, um, I'm just going to show the first path I've taken to go through this, the task of identifying the puck. I'm confident there's better ways, and I'm confident someone watching can come up with something better than I've done. So uh, feel free to submit your ideas if you'd like. So this is the example. I'm going to host this image, uh, and then maybe later I'll even host like a video, because the other thing that matters is when you do filter by color, just the changing daylight is enough to, or just changing ambient light is enough to cause trouble. So uh, probably what I'll do is at least for now, we're just gonna try to find the puck on a still frame. Uh, then I'll post a video, and then maybe I'll post a video with various lighting backgrounds and see if anybody can come up with a really good way to detect the puck. Also, since I did this, I actually taped you can't really see it right now, but the little striker, I use painter, like blue painter's tape. So the striker is no longer red. So that kind of helps uh, a little bit. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm just going to, I think I'll, we might want this again. So I'm just going to move it aside. And uh, the way that I'm going to do it is use color filtering. And we've already done this before, so I'm not going to waste anybody's time. But if you go to Python program at net, go to data analysis and then image and video analysis. Uh, we can come down here and I'm trying to see the color filtering and thresholding will be useful. But actually, if you just look at this picture, this is an important picture to think about. I'm not sure if I include it in the tutorial, but it's super useful right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just take the code that I used here and then also the blurring and smoothing I believe I'm going to steal from. Yeah, so there's just a bunch of different ways that we can apply blurs and stuff like that and smoothing operations to, to better get the object that we're attempting to filter for. So you can see these are just different examples. 
So, um, so what I'm going to do is I think first I'm just going to copy and paste over the code that I've, I've got that will at least get us there and I'll just explain it. And again, this is all code that there's tutorials on already, so I don't really want to spend any time talking about it, um, or at least writing it out anyways. I'll tell you what's going on though. So first we're going to convert to this HSV. So just looking at this picture here uh, from the previous tutorial, it actually is a pretty useful. So you've got the, the hue, the uh, saturation and value. And um, I wish that play button was in the way. I swear I had this picture somewhere. Anyway, um, let's see if I can find like a picture of hue saturation. Hue saturation value. Um, let's see if I can do like meaning or something. That would probably come up with a good one. Yeah, here we go. So here you can see hue is more like your color choice. The value is basically how bright is that color and the saturation is um, basically how much of that color do we have? How full is that color? So um, I'm sure someone's gonna have a gripe with the way I've described that, but you can look at the picture and get an idea for what I mean um, there. And so this actually makes for a pretty good way to filter by color rather than using RGB or BGR or whatever. So anyways, I'm gonna get out of here and uh, keep what I did. So I went ahead and this is probably the most tedious part of the operation is just trying to find which values you ought to go with. Um, I just found that these were some good values. In general, basically if you want to go through this, you can just start setting things like all at zero. So basically the lower is all zeros, the upper is all 255 maxed out. And then you just start uh, trimming away the bottom, then go back a little bit once you've got lost what you were hoping for, trim away the top, and then go back once you've uh, lost what you were hoping to find, and boom, you've got it. So um, so let me go ahead and run that and show you what we're kind of hoping for. So this was just like the original image coming in. And then this is just with some averaging blurring. This is the Gaussian blurring. This is uh, median blur, and I don't even see the object anymore. And then we've got a bilateral blur. So the bilateral blur right now looks does look the best. Um, but you're going to threshold anyways, most likely, um, and it's just really not going to matter. So any of these, like, like this one looks like it actually picks up some stuff down here, whereas these ones don't as much. So it might be better to just go with the averaging one or, or whatever. But yeah, all these are doing is just applying these various blurs, meshing them together, and then only showing what meets a certain, um, a certain threshold, basically, that is the lower red and the upper red as far as filtering by color is concerned. So that's how uh, we're gonna go about at least filtering. Um, but then the next thing is basically how do we, how do we go about really truly finding the, the puck itself? And so the way that I went ahead and did that is I stuck with the Gaussian blurring, but I actually think averaging with smooth is actually probably better. I might even just take that. Um, so rather than any of the blurs, let's see, I'm going to take, is averaged or averaging is just smooth uh, with the kernel there so then we'll just do this I think that's all we need to do let me rerun that real quick yeah okay so I think this one actually looks the best right now so I'm gonna go with that one and then if we wanted to we could apply a threshold so I'm gonna just copy this copy and then um, I'm just gonna paste this down here. So then what we can do is we can apply the threshold, say what our limits are, and we're gonna do the threshold rather than on blur. I'm actually gonna do it on smoothed. I like that one better. So let me run that again. And so, uh, let's see. Oh, we're not, sh oh, we are showing puck. Where did puck go? Why do I not see puck? Oh, it's up here. <laughs> okay, so puck, unfortunately, so I had initially done this with a different blur. So we probably need to come up with a different range here. I'm guessing we need to accept a darker range. So let me go with like a 30. Let's see how that one goes. Yeah, that looks really good. So as you can see here, this was the original image. This is after averaging. And then this is once we threshold for you know really finding just the puck. And so clearly, I think everyone would agree, um, that looks really good. Now, uh, the next thing is, you know, how, okay, once we find the puck, all we've done is filter for the puck. How do we get the value for the puck? Because at the end of the day, we have to translate this data 
to the robotic arm. So the way that uh, we can go about doing that is because we've done a threshold, like if we were to actually just print, uh, print out puck, you can see most of the values are actually gonna be zero. So instead, what we're gonna be looking for is basically you would wanna look for, let's see if we, yeah, we do have NumPy. So you'd wanna look through the puck, which is just an array. It's a NumPy array of X's and Y's. We, wanna, we would wanna look through that and find any instance, and it's also been threshold. So we would wanna find any instance where it's basically not zero, and we wanna know where are those instances where it's not zero. So uh, for example, what we could say is print np dot where and then the where clause is basically where puck doesn't equal zero and then uh, so we could just print that and then we get kind of this uh, but then what we could say or could query is uh, rather than np where puck does not equal zero we could say well the zeroth and then we could do the exact same thing for the firsteth boom and then we can see, so for the zeroth, I actually, if I recall right, it's not um, in OpenCV, it's actually, you're not getting coordinates in like x, y, you're actually getting them in y, x. We can confirm that in a little bit. But uh, this is basically, so like if you wanted to figure out, like if we look at this, we can clearly see, okay, 61, 62, 63. So, so we can be relatively confident. This is all, these are all the puck, right? Because they're very close to each other. Uh, and then coming down here, again, these are all very, very close to each other. So one option we have is we could actually probably just take this, uh, calculate the average, and boom, you've got the average y. And then come down here, calculate the average, and boom, you've got the average uh, x. Now, the last thing I want to do is convert, rather than doing this on a table, I'm actually kind of curious about... Uh, if this is actually a superior option than what I was doing before, because that actually looks really good right now. Now the lighting is pretty dim. It's actually kind of stormy today outside. So I'm actually, I'm kind of curious. This one might be superior. I had, like I said, I had been using the, uh, the Gaussian blur. So instead what I'm gonna do is, let's see how easily I can just modify this. So rather than uh, here, I think all we need to do, let me just copy and paste some stuff real quick and I'll explain what I'm doing here. So this is just a rescale factor and basically what I'm trying to do is the camera is actually a 1280 by 720, um, but I don't want to display it that big on my screen there and then there's also no reason to have that much resolution. Um, so I'm just going to do half of that basically. I'm also capturing the firstth camera, not the zeroth, because I'm recording on my zeroth camera. The secondary camera is over there, so that's why I'm changing that to one. But if you were to follow along and you had your own little table or whatever, you were probably going to use zero, is my guess. So now, uh, what we would want to do is wow one, uh, and then let's go ahead and tab all this over. Uh, the frame itself would actually be capture read. So uh, let's just say underscore frame, not fame, frame equals cap uh, dot read. We don't need this anymore. And uh, let's see, frame, we'll convert the frame immediately there. So now the only thing we need is we can't really get away with this wait key anymore. Um, and in fact, I, I don't think we can just say uh, CV2 wait key. Let's just do this. This one always works for me. There's an easier way, I'm pretty sure, but let's just do this. Copy, paste. Cool. Okay, let me try to run that real quick. <laughs> Let's see what we run into. Uh, so far that looks okay, but we don't have anything for the puck, which is awkward. What a bummer. I think it's because of the lighting situation though. Let me think. So the other one was a little brighter. So, mm, I mean, we could try to lower a couple things. I don't want to spend too long trying to do this, but anyway, that, that seems to have helped. Um, so the puck 
does look really good. Uh, we do have some edge data here that we probably don't actually want. Um, let me just uh, let's see. I'm hoping I can get rid. Of, wow, we got rid of the top. That's weird. Uh, 170. I forget what we even started with. To be honest, let's go with 150 over there. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Um, darn. <laughs> Let's go with a 160 then. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to go bump the puck real quick. Um, mm, that doesn't appear to want to actually track that puck. Let me go back down to maybe a 150 there. Let's see if the puck comes back up. It does. Let me plug in the table too. No, that still doesn't want to track it. It like disappears over some spots, which is just kind of weird. I'm not sure why that would be happening. I might go back to my original, uh, original value. <laughs> why would it? Cl I wonder why it would not be noticed. Pretty good. So I mean, I guess maybe it's slightly more dim there, but there's no shadow that I can see over there. That's really odd. Crazy. Let's do 20 and 20. Eventually it's going to get like super excited. Now we can get rid of the or, or the uh, the edges. Yeah, that one appears to be visible in most locations. It goes away still in that shadow, which is really weird. <laughs> anyway, I'll tweak more of that later. Um, but then the next things that we have to deal with are basically, you know, getting around the edges here, kind of cleaning this up a little bit, and then I'll kind of poke around with these other values. Um, but yeah, now that we have the puck and we can kind of, uh, we'll do a couple of things. One is hopefully we'll kind of clean this up a little bit. We'll remove these edges here. Uh, and then the other thing that we're going to try to do is actually get the center of the puck. Um, and that's the final bit of data that we really need to be able to pass to our arm. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, a better way to detect the puck, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in another video.